How are we doing, folks? So there's something I posted a while ago, 2023, where I took some snapshots of this talk by Naughty Dog. It's a pretty awesome talk. It's unlisted on their channel, so I don't know how I originally came to find it. However, there's some really cool stuff in here that still stands true to this day. So I'm going to do this in a bit of a new format. We're going to watch. We're going to react while I sit. We're a react streamer now. That's it. We've uh, we've run out of content there. New environment art video coming uh, this month as well. But yeah, let's react to this and share some info. I've also got Unreal Open down here as well to illustrate some things. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll sort of learn from that as well. Uh, Flashbang Inc. Oh, wait, it's not as bad. First off, thank you to all the backers who have supported on Patreon. You can support from £1 a month or join the membership tier or a career mentorship. So thank you, folks. Uh, and let's get into it. So this is Advances in Real Time by Mary Wang and Abhishek Aurora, SIGGRAPH Asia 2020. And it covers some of the lighting that they do and how they light in Unreal. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to say, okay, discuss it. Is it still true? Have things changed now? Is it still the same? And just react to some stuff. We'll see how the format does. I love lighting. That's my career. That's my job. So let's uh, try talking about it on the strum. So, uh, yeah. Right. So this camera's probably going to get in the way. So let's kind of go down into boom. Look at that boom. I'm here and I'm there. Can't catch me. Too fast. I'm a panda. Right. Let's go. Uh, hopefully audio levels are going to be good for this stuff. Well. Always battling with frame rate for better shout out quality when lighting real time cutscenes. I mentioned earlier that we mostly use spotlights. This is right away, we mostly use spotlights. Still true to this day. Um, I'll go over why, let them talk a bit more, but we are still primarily using spotlights for environment lighting and cinematic lighting, especially if it's dynamic lighting. Okay? This is because area light and point light shadows are too costly. Yep, true. So, um... Area lights and point lights are extremely costly. Uh, one point light is the equivalent of six spotlights because you've got to think that when the point light expands, it's going in like a cube map, right? It's going in uh, more six directions, up, down, left, right, positive, negative. Whereas with a spotlight, you can see the cone. What is in the cone is rendered. And what's interesting about this, I just want to mute and just play this back a little bit watch this is like one of the dancing scenes right and just look at uh and look at the spotlights are bobbing and following the character so what's common is when a character has heavy movement in a cinematic very rarely will we keyframe that light manually it's just a pain especially as it's not scalable so as longer cinematics take place it's absolute hell to keyframe a light frame by frame so what we end up doing is we take the rigs from the characters and we attach the light. So in this case, you know, you could have, you know, in the, in the case of these dancing scenes, you can kind of tell from the way the spotlight is bouncing organically that it's using uh, sort of like the chest bone or the head bone, and it's going to follow that sort of motion. You can also have it rotate around that bone as well. So you can light these heavy action scenes. Uh, as we sort of go along. So it helps speed things up. And fire, but we keep the radius very. Interesting here, we got quite a few. And with cinematics, you can use a lot more floating lights that don't exist in the world because it's locked to a camera. In level lighting, nowadays, we tend not to use floating lights um, for sort of realistic games. I mean, you could, but physically based lighting, the whole point of that is to not use fake lights because fake lights don't exist in the real world. With cinematics, you're locked to the camera, so you can kind of go really hardcore on that. And within reason, right? Still using spotlights, so. Very small, or have no shadow. Lamps and fire, but we keep the radius very small, or have no shadow. You can kind of see here lights spawning in and out. So these lights are, you know, set to spawn just before the camera will turn. Or there's a cut. We've even got... <laughs> that's pretty cool we've even got like 
a tiny light that is um look this is how much attention to detail you know light is going to um there's a tiny spotlight i don't know what it means when it's green versus purple um but there's this tiny spotlight that is kind of from the way it's rotating it looks like it's attached to a bone and what it's doing is it's it's basically giving the uh the metal because the metal's swinging so fast it's giving that metal that shine but that's what that's why cinematic lighting is we often say it's a lot it's a different role to level lighting it's a lot more artistic because you can do a lot more of the traditional cinema stuff and fake stuff whereas level lighting is a lot more technical because you have to have a level where you can walk around 360 no scope um and not run into phantom lights run at 60 fps and all that sort of stuff so that's why they're split into different roles um, in the industry i just thought this was pretty cool <laughs> there's like a tiny tiny point light uh, spotlight that gives the material definition um which is pretty cool we also keep the radius and cone angle as tight as possible yep so radius and cone angle very important Anything that's in the cone is rendered. Anything not in the cone, not rendered as a shadow depth. So you uh, want to keep those cones as optimal as you can. We do not waste the budget. Hair and skin is also very expensive. Very nightmare to light. The cost of rendering is determined by number of lit pixels of skin and hair we see on the screen. So for close-up shots like these, optimization is necessary. Yeah. I will introduce some of the features we have. Yeah, that's interesting. Lighting hair is always a bit chaotic, um, especially if you're going to be using ray tracing or not ray tracing. And a lot of times very expensive. So you'll have, you don't necessarily need every light to affect the hair in a cinematic. So sometimes you will can bypass that with a certain light, like uh, maybe a very subtle fill light versus a key light that needs to have that on as well. Uh, I want to skip forward a little bit because um, I don't want to, go too much on the super technical stuff um because there's some really cool stuff in here with the framing so yeah they liked in maya well they used to so they had maya synced to their um engine because all the level dressing and stuff was done in maya that was their like pre-game engine and then it's put into some type of engine that runs gameplay they, they actually liked in Maya with the spotlights and then they have a, a there's like a video out there I think it's on this video where you can see as they move the light in Maya it updates in the engine but you see the cones are very small very short because this camera is locking in on like maybe a higher focal length you can see here that this is a non-shadow casting light it's going to be super expensive to render on things but we do do that often not every light has a shadow nor should it have a shadow in cinematics uh, so we do use point lights in some cases but we disable shadows on them you have to be careful where you use them controlled non-shadow casting lights to ellie these three lights are cheaper than one light that casts on everything yeah, yeah, yeah. because if i have one big light from the window it is still calculating everything that we're not exactly. seeing from the camera like yeah one big light coming through the window you're rendering through the transparency on the meshes around the window you're rendering on the outside um of the you know the shadow still getting calculated there shadows will get cal like calculated in that attenuation radius even if it looks like nothing's happening so that's why you go in with these very small sort of uh, spotlights and make sure it's the cone is only hitting the characters in certain angles because uh, often you as soon as you, a light hits that surface you're rendering a shadow on it um, a good mode in unreal for this is uh, if we just add a let's add a spotlight for example so a good mode in unreal is uh that can help you visualize how this stuff is rendered is alt, alt 7 lighting visualization mode green blue up to orange and early red is uh good when you start to go to deep red to purple that's really dangerous you don't want to be having that in your gameplay lighting in cinematics there's potentially it could reach there however if you were to have a lot of overlapping lights and you start going into purple if you disable shadows on some of these lights it's not as bad as having them all on but 
in level lighting we tend to avoid going above this middle spectrum but in cinematic sometimes you just can't control how many lights are hitting a character from the environment and stuff like that so you're more like likely to get it there but yeah anything that's rendered um in here is going to have a cost right so we often bring the attenuation down bring the tone angle down where possible we make sure that we're only overlapping slightly in a lot of cases so yeah if you're bringing in it's better to have these smaller lights with a lower attenuation than a big light coming through the window in a lot of cases for uh that's a good note from them like the other side of each character's face let me explain what these three lights are doing dina's rem has full shadow but the radius is very small yeah. and not reaching to ellie at all mm -hmm. on ellie i have a light with skip hair feature turned on and it is adding just enough light to enhance spec on ellie's cheek perfect so this light that is giving this um, rim or contour, it has hair rendering off. The light is small, but I guarantee you there's still going to be points of that spotlight that are hitting the hair. And as soon as it hits the hair, it's getting rendered. So even if it looks like the light isn't doing much, it's going to render it behind the scenes. So you've got to be careful on that sort. And Dina's hand. The other light on Ellie has hair only feature turned on, so it will leave the skin unaffected. Again, the radius of the light is very small, yep. and it adds subtle rim to Ellie's hair. Moving on to optimization with the scripting, yeah. for this shot, I made the hair data render. This stuff is um, it fully uh, gets pretty crazy, so uh, I want to focus more on the art, arty arty. But yeah, do give this a watch. It's very cool. There's also a section in here where they show get pair feature. When this is turned on. You can see this is all Maya. So they they light in Maya and it kind of transfers over to the engine. The light will leave the hair unaffected. It is commonly used in fill light that is having option to use scripting to optimize for hair and skin. Here, we can make the alpha hair switch to data render. Depending on the scene, we can easily save one to two milliseconds when the adjust position of uh -huh. here's, here's what I wanted to show earlier. Maya engine and the light, animate as needed, save keyframes, and go on to the next shot. Even though we use unique tools for lighting games, the basic principle of lighting is still same the scene file and we only use Maya spotlights. Our basic workflow is that we'll get the scene file and we edit lights in Maya. I do this a lot in Unreal. Viewport in the bottom right is piloting the light. That's Control Shift P on Unreal. Um, engine is up in the right and a general viewport view on the left for making sure you're not crossing lights too much. If you don't pilot lights, I highly recommend you do. So if we go in here and we grab this light and we do Control Shift P, we are now that light. And what's good is when you have this and you have a second viewport, up, you know, you can, you can have this on, let's pretend this is on the second monitor. I have my overall view of the scene here, and then I can just start dancing like boom, raving out. Uh, 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 uh. And I can move this around like this. It's just way better to do that and way more quicker and interactive than trying to do this, right? Oh, let's, let's kind of get this and okay, let's, Rotate it slightly. Oh, we've got snaps on. Let's turn it off. Are we hitting it with the rim light? Whereas we can just may as well just go here, right? And zoom in on the corner of a face. I did that with all the cinematic lighting uh, that I did in the last job. So it just makes things super um, interactive and fun uh, for lighting cutscenes. Uh, yeah, you can pilot anything. So I can pilot this box. Become a uh, box -u. Like that. The so piloting is great use it as much as you can i'd recommend and we have a tool to connect maya and devkit in real time yeah, cool. so what we see here is what we will see in the final game yeah not uh, i know a lot of people criticize this for not being ideal that it's not an engine maybe things are different now but you'd be surprised that a lot of custom engines are going to work differently to unreal uh some will be better some will be worse some will have a mix of both but as long as you can get the real-time feedback on this that's pretty cool
or the cinematics. Their level lighting is a different thing. They bake the lighting. That again is a a, a much older workflow nowadays. So, um, but yeah, being able to just see what you're doing in there is uh, awesome. So yeah, spotlights still using that. It's cheap. Point lights are expensive. If you have a lower attenuation with um, shadows disabled, that can be good. Um, it doesn't cost as much. The more you can turn off shadows, the better. Not every light needs to have a shadow on. Um, cinematic lighting is a lot more artistic and freeform than level lighting. They are two separate jobs and roles in the industry as well. So yeah, that we're coming up on 15 minutes. Hopefully that gives a little bit of an insight to this stuff. If you want to see more details of like, how do we actually light? What's the nitty gritty of lighting? Uh, have a look at the channels on the video, uh, <laughs> channels on the video, the videos on the channel. I've got a ton of lighting stuff. I've got the more tutorial based stuff on the Patreon as well. Again, thanks very much, folks. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next video, which will be some more environment art stuff. But uh, for now, peace.